No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and today we've got a old school back to basics presentation style video. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while actually. Um, lately we've been doing a lot of Facebook ads related content, um, how to get results, you know, how does the business manager uh, work, etc. But for today's video I just thought I would uh, mix it up a bit and like I said just go back to a, a presentation style video and back to social media marketing at its core. Uh, how to reach out, you know, how to get results, and in this case, how to make a hundred pounds a day with social media marketing. And of course, this is applicable for euros, dollars, yen, you know, whatever. Uh, but you know, just for the sake of argument, I've used pounds for this. Um, so without further ado, let's just hop right into it, and let's just start at the start. Um, you know, for those of you that are completely new to social media marketing, then obviously, you know, this is where you start. For those of you that already have an agency, etc., uh, just use this as a sort of refresher, you know, just to uh, go back to the basics a bit and just to make sure that you've got all of this covered. So the first thing you do is pick a niche. Now, we all know, or for those of you that are, uh, have been watching my channel for a while, you know how I feel about picking a niche. You know that. Um, I am much more proponent of uh, playing the field a bit, experience in social media, um, you know, basically just dabble into different niches, experience what it's like to have clients that are not a right fit, experience what it's how, uh, like to have clients that are far too big for you, etc. Because over time, you will find out which uh, or what niche you actually enjoy working with and what niche you can actually get results for. But just for the sake of argument, we do have to start somewhere. So, you know, like I said, let's just pick one niche, okay? So when you start out, pick a niche that you're going to begin reaching out to. Then the second thing you need is something to offer. So that is when we start picking our service. So I, I will be going into all the details of this uh, in just a moment, but this is just like the, the basically the broad overview, a helicopter overview, if you will, of uh, the starters checklist. So we pick our niche, we pick our service, and then we write out our mission statement, which is basically what you are going to do uh, for your client. You know, what is the transformation that they are going to get by working with you. So what are you going to do to that niche with your service uh, to give them the desired outcome? And then once you have all that down, you pick a method of outreach. So now that you know, okay, this is the niche that I want to deliver results for, this is the service that I'm going to use, this is the transformation I'm going to give them, now you need to decide, okay, how am I actually gonna reach out to these people? And again, we'll be going into all the details in just a moment, so please stick around. So in terms of picking a niche, what I think you should do is basically pick a combination of the three elements. So I want you to look at niches that you are passionate about, niches you are knowledgeable about, and niches you can get results for. And what I recommend you guys do is literally just Write this down, pen and paper, old school, no laptop, no mind maps, no apps, nothing like that, just old school, pen and paper. Write down five niches you are passionate about. Then on the next page, write down five niches you are knowledgeable about. And then on the third page or below each other, you know, whatever you want, if you want to save paper, niches you can get results for. And yes, I know before you guys now start saying, well, we don't know what niche we can get results for because we're just starting out. What you need to do here is just think of, okay, what niche has an obvious uh, result that they desire? So, for example, if you, um, let's just take my dad's company, for example. My dad owns a recruitment agency, and it was actually one of my dad's clients. Um, that was, like, one of my first clients as well. Um, and, basically, they have a sort of recruitment agency as well. And, basically, the result that they wanted was more projects and also more contractors. So if I could deliver a result in the form of, like I said, another project or more contractors that they can use to fulfill the project, then that is a transformation for them and that is a result that would make them happy. Now, in terms of the recruitment industry, etc., it is something that I'm knowledgeable about because obviously, you know, I take an interest into it because um, it was, uh, well, my dad. I just want to quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that I have a free social media marketing course 
and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So basically what I've done is I have created a custom audience with Google Ads. Uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where I basically give you the direct link to download this course. So it's an unpublished link on Teachable which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel. So if you want a free social media marketing course, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements. So without further ado, let's hop back into the video. He owns his own company where he basically delivers services for recruitment agencies. My granddad came over here to the Netherlands from the UK to start his own recruitment agency. So, you know, I do know my fair share of recruitment and what is going on in that industry. So I'm knowledgeable about it. I know how to get results for them or I know what results they desire. However, I am not really passionate about it. So I would not necessarily pick that as my main niche to reach out to, okay? So that is basically how you need to look at this. Same goes for, um, let's say for example, you choose the fitness niche. So are you passionate about it? Probably, okay, same here. I'm passionate about fitness as well. I like to work out, so I am passionate about fitness. I am knowledgeable about fitness as well. You know, I know um, almost everything there is to know, to be fair, because obviously I have a uh, past as a fitness instructor and I know how to get results for any fitness related business. If it's a meal prep company, they need more sales. If it's a gym, they need more members. If it's an online coach, they need more sign ups. Okay, so that is basically a uh, niche where I you know, fulfill or basically, you know, I cover all three of those um, topics and uh, you know, items on the checklist. So that could be a potential niche to use, okay? So that is what I want you guys to do. Is like I said, write down five of each of those uh, items on the checklist and see which one actually fits all of those or ticks all of those boxes. Moving on. So in terms of the niche, as I mentioned, um, with the results, just think, okay, where are they now? And where do they actually wanna be? And can you bridge that gap? So in the case of the recruitment agency, you know, they have X amount of contractors, they want more contractors or they want another project to fulfill, uh, you know, with the contractors. Um, and then, like I said, my service, in this case, Facebook ads, could actually help that because, you know, I can generate leads for a new project, but also generate leads for more contractors. In the fitness example that I used, the current situation is that they have, for example, a thousand members and in 12 months time, they want 1500 members. And again, with Facebook ads, I could run a uh, you know, an advertisement or a campaign that gets them more members, okay? So that is how you think about the results for picking a niche. So in terms of the service, because that is obviously, you know, the, the second item on the checklist, this is how you do it. So first of all, think for yourself, is there a service that you already know how to deliver results for. For example, if you are a web designer, then you know how to develop websites and is this a service that you could offer for your agency and have a web design agency as opposed to a social media marketing agency? Do you know Facebook ads? Do you know Google ads? Do you know how to create graphics? You know, are you a graphic designer? And so on and so forth, okay? So just think to yourself, is there a service that you already know how to deliver results for? If yes, then um, think to yourself, is this service a value-based uh, service or is it easily scalable? If no, then pick a value-based service and hire a contractor. So just find someone else to fulfill the work for you while you learn how to do it yourself. Okay, so in, let's just, for example, say that you have got a, a service that you already know how to deliver results for, then think to yourself, um, like I said, is it value-based or easy scalable? If no, then pick this service whilst learning a other high ticket skill. For example, if you are a web developer, but it's not easily scalable, then, um, you know, basically pick the service for now while learning Facebook ads, Google ads, etc. If it is value-based or easily scalable, then just go all in on that, okay? Just forget everything about social media, uh, Facebook ads, etc. in the case of web design, and just go all in on that. Again, you know, that's uh, dependent on the fact that uh, web design is scalable or not. I have no idea because I'm not an expert at that, okay? So we've got our niche, we've got our service. Now it's time to write out our mission statement. And it's as simple as this, guys. I help niche get results using service. So in my case, I help e-com stores scale their business, increase their return on ad spend using Facebook advertising and obviously, you know, hyper-focused um, retargeting, etc. Okay, so 
once we have all of that covered, just spend you know, uh, you know five to ten minutes on this, uh, basically getting everything together. And once you have all of that um, on paper and uh, ready to go, you can now pick a method of outreach. And notice that there's no, you know, there's nothing in terms of information on this slide. And that's because there is no perfect method of outreach. There is no structure to outreach. There is no be all, end all, secret method that uh, we use to get clients. It all comes down to who you are as a person, okay? So if anyone ever tells you that cold calling is the best method of outreach or cold email is the best method of outreach or inbound leads or whatever it is, then just do not listen to them, okay? You need to focus on yourself. Who are you as a person? Are you an introverted person? Are you extroverted? Are you someone that likes to really put in the work or would you rather find ways to automate it? Are you someone that would rather spend their time or would rather spend their money and so on and so forth, okay? So who you are as a person, what your character is like, where you are financially, what you're like time-wise will all depend uh, or, or basically, you know, uh, depict what your method of outreach will be. In my case, it is cold email, okay? The cold email is the method of outreach that I use. Why? Because I've completely automated it at the moment. You know, we've got virtual assistants, we've got email scrapers, we've got data miners, and we've got our own software that basically automates this entire process for us. Secondary to that, we also have appointment setters that scour uh, freelancer websites looking for low-hanging fruit, but that does come secondary to that. Basically, we use up all of the um, free tokens and connects that we have available on freelance websites, and then we just leave it at that, okay? In times where either we are testing our cold method of outreach or we are restructuring it and we've switched off the system for uh, a little while, the appointment setters have done their work, we'll then flick on the Facebook ads, okay? So at any moment in time, there is always some sort of um, method of outreach um, that is active, you know, basically getting us more meetings and more clients for our agency. So if we are working on the method of outreach, we've switched off the machine, then we'd let Facebook ads do its work. If the Facebook ads are off and we are working on the machine, we uh, let the appointment setters go ham. If the appointment setters um, are not available or they are finished for the month, then, you know, we crank up the cold method, uh, the cold email outreach machine, okay? So that is basically how we do it. And uh, like I said, you know, the same goes for you guys. You know, if you are reaching out via cold Facebook messages and there's one week where you just notice that your productivity is declining, you want to take a break, you're feeling burnt out, then just for the week, switch on Facebook ads and let the Facebook ads do it for you while you catch up on rest and, you know, you sharpen your sword, okay? Moving on, we've picked our method of outreach or I've basically explained how my method of outreach is uh, picked and what I do. But now we need to figure out, okay, how many people do we need to reach out to in order to hit our goal? Now, for those of you that remember, our goal is £100 a day, okay? So we need to now figure out how can we get £100 a day or let's just make it easier, how can we get to £3,000 a month? And yes, you know, there are months with 31 days and there's also a month with 28 days, but let's just stick to the basics here, guys. 30 days a month. 3,000 a month, 100 a day, okay? That is the end goal for us, and this is basically what we've come up with so far, okay? We've picked a niche, we've picked a service, we've written out our mission statements, we've decided on a method of outreach, and we're basically going to use this now to, with the method of outreach to somehow accumulate 3,000 a month or 100 pounds a day, okay? Now, let's just simplify this a little bit more, or first of all, use my own example uh, for this. So, um, as you can see, the niche is e-com, the service is Facebook ads, uh, the mission statement is I help e-com stores scale their business with Facebook ads, and my method of outreach is email outreach. And as you can see, we now need to figure out, okay, how can we use all this information, times it by our email outreach, and uh, get to clients, okay? So we, know, we have now basically decided on all of this, we know what the outcome is, and now what we need to figure out to make this formula work is what email outreach is, okay? Solve for X. How many emails do we need to send out or how many people do we need to reach out to to basically make this or turn this into two paying clients, okay? So let's just say we send out 200 emails a day. And now before you say, oh, that's too much, guys, 
there are easier ways to reach out to 200 pe- people a day, you know, 200 businesses. Um, if you find this too much, if you are not willing to put in the time, you know, to reach out to 200 businesses, then find easier ways, okay? If you are given a task, always think to yourself, can I automate this? If you do not believe you can automate it, okay, can you delegate this? If you can't, then you need to either find ways to eliminate that process, that task, or you need to just figure it out, okay? So 200 emails a day, I think is very much doable. And there are times where I've said, reach out to 10 businesses a day, 15 businesses a day, 20 businesses a day, but I have now realized that 200 emails a day is very much possible. And why are we reaching out to so many businesses every single day? Because we want to hit our goal, okay? So the goal is what makes us do this. We are not going to be reaching out to 200 businesses every single day for the rest of our lives, no. This is because we have a goal in mind, okay? We want to reach our goal of having two clients within 30 days so we can hit our £100 a day mark. And to reach our goal, we need to do things because, you know, we, we are not always, we're not going to get £100 a day by doing the same thing we've always done, okay? We need to do something out of the ordinary to get an out of the ordinary result. In this case, gain an additional hundred pounds a day. So for that, we are going to be reaching out to 200 businesses a day. So let's just say out of the 200 emails we send each and every day, a hundred emails gets opened. Now, if you know, you know how to do this, if you know what to type out as the subject line, if you know what to say in the email, 50% open rate, in my opinion, is very much doable. I've seen it in the coaching group, in my, you know, in my coaching students, people that have enrolled in the Lifestyle Design Mastery course, a 50% open rate is average, okay? Yes, there will always be, um, you know, students that are below that. I also know a lot of students that are much higher than that, like literally to the point where they have a higher open rate than me, but 50% is an average, okay? That is not to say that all 50% of these emails are going to be positive, but a 50% open rate should be doable, okay? So like I said, not all of the 100 emails that are opened will get a response. Some people are too busy, some people are not interested, some people think it's spam, some people think it's a bot, and so on and so forth. So let's say, out of the 200 emails that you sent, and the 100 emails that are opened, 20% of the people reply. Again, some will be positive, some will be negative, but we get 20 replies of the 200 emails that you send, okay? And that is 10% of all of the emails that you send, which again, is very much doable. Out of the 20 replies, like I said, a lot of them are negative, you know, we don't have time, uh, what else, they are busy, not right now, um, we'll forward it on to the gatekeeper, anything like that, okay? It always happens, again, we'll take 90% of those uh, replies are negative or just not a right fit. So out of the 20 replies, Two people say, yeah, you know what, sounds good. Let's hop on a call and let's see what you have to say, okay? And again, these numbers are very much doable. And I know that because I hit these numbers as well. And I know one special because my coaching students hit these numbers as well. And people that are in the Lifestyle Design Mastery course hit these numbers as well. Yes, they do have my scripts and they have my methods, but this is very, very realistic, okay? So let's just say out of the two meetings that you book, your closing rate is 5 to 10%. Because why? You are still a beginner. You're still starting out. Uh, my closing rate at the moment is about 20%. It should be much higher than that. But, um, you know, sales has never really been my, my my strong suit. You know, I'm still very much trying to improve this every single day. And for now, 20% is something that I am okay with. Um, obviously, I am trying to increase that. But let's just say, as a starter, your closing rate is anywhere between 5 to 10%. Okay, so with a 5 to 10% closing rate and these, um, basically these, these statistics and methods, um, we need to now figure out, okay, how many meetings can we get in a month? How many um, emails are we going to send in total, etc., uh, to hit our goal of two clients? So let's say we only work weekdays. So out of the 30 days, um, you know, we only work weekdays, which means that you only work 22 days a month, okay? So eight weekend days, basically, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to Friday, you work. So we um, we reach out to 200 businesses for 22 days, okay? So 22 days of outreach, we book 44 meetings. How did I get 44? 
because we book two meetings a day with our method of outreach. We are reaching out to, um, you know, basically we do 22 days of outreach, so 44 meetings booked, okay? So that doesn't mean we are, reaching, we are getting 44 clients because obviously we don't close every single one, okay? So one in 20 or one in 10 is basically our uh, closing rate with a five to 10% closing rate, which means that if we do this, we will actually hit our goal. So 44 meetings, if we have a closing rate of 5%, that is on average two clients, two point something, okay? Now let's round it off, two clients, okay? So if you do this for 30 days, you reach out to 200 businesses every single day, you will hit that 100 pounds a day mark, okay? And for some of you, you'll have a higher closing rate, which means that you'll need to reach out to less businesses. Some of you will have a lower closing rate, which means that you need to reach out to more businesses. Some people will have a higher reply rate. Some people will book more meetings and so on and so forth. But this is just an average, okay? This is how you need to look at your goals. You decide what your goal is and you reverse engineer from there, okay? So let's say I didn't want two clients. I wanted 200 pounds a day. So that means four clients, then I'll just double these numbers. And yes, it is a lot of work, but you know we have a goal in mind. So we have an extraordinary goal. We need to do extraordinary things. So I think this is very, very realistic. Like I said, this is based on the numbers of my students and uh, people that enrolled in my course as well. So this is very much doable. And I think that if you guys do this, you will 100% reach your goal, okay? And like I said, if you know these numbers don't add up for you, then tweak them to fit your needs. Like I said, you know, not everyone will have a 10% close rate. Your close rate might be much higher or much lower and so on and so forth, okay? So for those of you that now have all these limits and beliefs, etc., I've already aligned them up here. So, uh, you know, you don't need to complain or anything like that. The first one is obviously 200 emails a day is too many. Like I said, we do this every single day. Why or how? Because we have automated systems for that. If you on your own cannot reach out to 200 businesses a day, find someone to help you. Find a sibling, find a family member, find a friend, find someone online, find an outsourcer, find a virtual assistant system, you know, f or even find a software. You know, there are so many ways to reach out to 200 e uh, businesses a day. Lead scrapers, data miners, lead scraping software, just regular software, you know, plugins, um, you know, manual labor you know there's so many ways of doing this so just get thinking how can you do this for yourself if you think your method of outreach or your way of reaching out to 200 emails a day or 200 businesses a day is not efficient then think how can i automate this how can i delegate this or how can i eliminate myself from the process altogether like we have done okay then second objection, nobody is replying. So if you reach out to 200 businesses and you don't get your 20% uh, or 10% reply rate, then you need to tweak your message. If your open rate is lower than, um, in this case, 50%, then you need to tweak your subject line because it's not enticing enough. It's not interesting enough. So the first step is to make sure that they open your email. As soon as you know what your numbers are for open your open on your email, then you can look at your subject, uh, not your your basically body message. So the email that you send. Okay, if you're not hitting the reply rate that you basically you know your from your hypothesis, then you need to tweak your message, make it more enticing, make it more to the point, make it shorter, make it more of a low barrier to entry for the client and so on and so forth, okay? Same goes for nobody is interested. Then make it more interesting for them. If you're going, you know, all guns blaze, uh, guys, I've seen, I'm not gonna you know, mention any names of any people that are, um, you know, putting this in their course, etc. But, you know, I've seen the outreach messages of other people and then they come to me and say, oh, why isn't anyone replying to this? I was promised that this was the be all end all message. Guys, you know, if everyone's using the same email that, you know, someone has basically preached out to you guys to saying that is going to be the be all end all message, then just tweak it. You know, it's not rocket science. If you are not getting the desired amount of replies, then tweak the message. And I've seen these messages where they go all guns blazing. This is my service. 
shall I pencil you in for the next, you know, whatever, for a 30 minute consultation, scrap all that, make it a low barrier to entry, just ask them something that, like I said, doesn't require any commitment from them. Ask them, is it okay to send a quick loom video? Ask them, is it okay if um, I explain more about my business and so on and so forth, okay? So just because some guru has said that you need to write out a certain template or script does not make it true. If you, are, if you reach out to businesses and you do get the required or the desired um, reply rate with the guru script, then by all means do it. If you are not happy with your current uh, open rates, your current reply rates, then tweak it up, change it up, you know, make changes and see what works and what doesn't, okay? Then the next one is obviously, you know, you've got them through your flow, they're on a call with you, but you can't close them. Then again, you know, you just need to find out what works. At what point are you losing the sale? At what point do you lose confidence in the call? What are you doing wrong? Tweak that, change it, make sure that um, you record all of your calls as well. Something that I highly recommend, record every single sales call that you have. Why? Because it's great to look back on. And once you've left that call, nine times out of 10, you'll either feel relieved or you feel like it's done. You know, you've done really well. Then you'll go, go I don't know, to the kitchen, you'll have a glass of water, have a drink, you'll sit on it for a bit, then what you should do is come back and review the game tape. You know, footballers do this as well. They will play a match, you know, get a shower, rest up, and then you come back, watch the, the, the game tape, watch the footage from the game and see, okay, what could they do to improve? And over time, you will improve the little, the little small things in the call and you will have a higher closing rate or in this case, you will close your first clients, okay? Then I don't hear back from them. Again, something that I hear a lot as well. It's all in the follow-up, guys. Money is in the follow-up. You need to be following, be pleasantly persistent, okay? Write this down. If you have a pen and paper, write down. Be pleasantly persistent with the follow-up. There are so many things that could get in the way. Just think of how many messages you get on your phone on a daily basis, WhatsApp, iMessage, Facebook Messenger, Instagram DM, TikTok DM. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many different things and the business owner probably has that times 10 as well. So just because he hasn't replied to you does not mean that he's seen the message, okay? It does not mean that um, he's ignoring you altogether. Maybe he read it, but he was too busy. Maybe he saw it come through, but he thought, you know, I'll open that when I get the time and it just fell to the bottom of the list. Okay, there are so many factors that play a role in someone getting back to you. So be pleasantly persistent and follow up every single day until they say no. If you haven't got a no yes, a no yet, sorry, then you need to keep, you know, consistently following up. There is no no reply. You need to either get a yes or a no. I need to continue basically you know, following up and reaching out until you get an answer. Okay, and then the last one, they think, um, 15, that's actually a spelling mistake there. I just noticed that. They think 1,500 pounds is too much. Well, guys, if they think 1,500 pounds is too much, then you need to make them realize why it's not, why it's an investment, okay? You need to make sure that they understand that you are bridging the gap from the current situation to the desired situation. And, you know, yes, for some businesses, if you are reaching out to your local bakery that um, is only doing, let's say, 500 pounds a month, uh, then yes, 1500 will be too much, but then you need to either reach out to a different business or you lower your retainer and you know you need to basically double down on the other numbers to reach your 100 pounds a day. So let's say rather than seven, uh, 1500 um, um, per client, you only charge 750 a client, then that means you'll need to reach out to, or you need to close for clients and then all the numbers just double, okay? And if this isn't attainable within the first month. The great thing about social media marketing is, is that it's accumulative, okay? So if you close one client in January of the month and you close a client in February of the month, then you've still got your 3,000 a month because the client from January is still there in February, okay? So the longer you do this, the more clients you get, okay? So it all stacks. And then over time, you will hit the 3K a month mark and that will mean that you're earning 100 a day. Okay, so obviously this is something that uh, I do full time. I have my own social media marketing agency as well. And I also teach you guys on how to do the same. And you know, you've heard me say this before on the, uh, basically on my videos as well. And in my content that I have my own coaching business. I literally take you guys on as a personal client and I work with you on your agency as well. And 
been doing this for a while, absolutely loving it. We've been getting great results lately, and I've also been getting a lot of testimonials uh, from you guys as well, which I'm very grateful for. And I just wanted to quickly show you one that um, I thought was very, very relevant to uh, a lot of you guys in this situation as well, because it is something that a lot of people still think is not possible, and they don't fully believe that they can have their own agency or be their own boss or hit these numbers that you see all these people hit as well and that is why i just wanted to quickly show you guys uh, this quick testimonial from um ryan out of the coaching group hey guys ryan here uh this is a quick video just to thank joshua and uh give some feedback on his coaching and uh lifestyle design mastery course initially i found uh joshua on youtube and, you know, like we all have, we get this little shiny object syndrome where we're looking for information and answers. Um, I was focusing on the digital marketing at the time. I have seen so many gurus and over the years, I am, I'm, I'm cynical. Yeah. You start flashing nice cars, flash watches and telling me you're making a million pounds in a, you know, overnight. I don't trust you. Not that, you know, I don't disprove it. And there was one thing that really stood out to me with Joshua was his transparency and his willingness to actually teach people the reality with what he does. You know, he does as he says, he practices what he preaches. And I love that and resonated with it. So after watching, I don't know, about two and a half months worth of videos, I said, enough's enough. The guy does know what he's talking about. He is the real deal. I got in contact um, with him on Instagram and decided to talk to him uh, just rather than go through his initial uh, discovery call. Um, I wanted to pick his brains more, still a cynical guy. And I hopped on a call, we had an awesome chat, and I realised then and there, yeah, this is the guy I'm going to learn from. So I got enrolled in his coaching, uh, which has been phenomenal, because the ability to have somebody on demand that has the answers and has been through the problems you're facing and have an answer the same day, oh, it's been awesome. I've not had to get stuck and delay my plans and goals. It's just been, I'm stuck, don't get frustrated, send Joshua a message, get a response, apply what he says, boom, it's worked. And the things he's taught me, my productivity within my business and how everything's scaling right now is phenomenal. I've landed some clients. Um, I've landed one in the insurance game and another uh, few in home improvements right now with the teachings he's done with the outreach methods. And overall, the structure and the scalability of what he's taught me and everything else that he's provided has been top notch. So, you know, if you're considering looking at this industry and working with Joshua, can comfortably say I don't think there's any better place to go if you're gonna have someone that's genuine and actually wants you to succeed and is the real deal and yeah thank you so much and good luck okay that's good stuff from Ryan there and um, I'm literally holding the door open for you guys as well so if you guys want uh, my personal help with your agency if you're you know basically fed up of being stuck in the situation where you are you feel like you're spinning your wheels you feel like you're basically doing 10 times the amount of work as everyone else but you're just not getting anywhere you know you're literally in the same situation you were a few months back um you know you're trying to do everything you can to push that you know needle further but you know you literally just hit that glass ceiling then i am here to help you you know you guys out and um like i said you know you're very welcome to become part of uh, my coaching program for those of you that um you know have made it to the end of the video obviously thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below or if you'd rather not leave them as a comment, then you can also request access to the Lifestyle Design community, which is my private Facebook group that also has a free social media marketing beginners course in it as well. Um, so make sure you request access to that. You'll get all of the freebies, all the good stuff. And like I said, I'm active in this group every single day. So if you uh, basically post your question there, I'll be sure to answer, the, answer it. And like I said, if you want my personal help, um, what you can do is um, click on the link below, schedule a quick call with either me or my head of operations, Elliot. Uh, we will basically have a quick conversation, see if we're a right fit for each other, see if we you know, can create that win-win situation where you know I can literally take your business and push it to the next level. Then um, you know if, if that is um, a good fit, then I will offer you a place in the coaching program. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.